this is Cheryl with Arthritis Life and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to choose a pill box when you have arthritis or other um, conditions that might be causing inflammation or pain in your, in your hands. Count up all your pills, figure out what's the size, and then look at the options from there. This is one of the larger ones. If you don't have that many, then you can get away with one of the smaller ones. So, that sounds kind of obvious, but you don't want to fall in love with a certain pill box and then realize, wait a minute, I can't use this because it do, it's not big enough. The second step is figuring out how does the pill box open and close and does that match your ability at the moment. For example, something like this, it requires quite a bit of force to close it and open it. That might not be a problem for you, but if you have a large degree of inflammation, it might be hard to find a workaround for that. So either have a snap or they might have a push button like this one that opens it. Um, another alt alternative to a push button is this kind of cute one that I kind of, that I like where you push on this kind of button. Again, if, if your thumb really hurts, you could kind of work around it by pushing with a different finger and stabilizing it with the rest of your hand. Other kind of more unique style that I found actually online, I purchased this because I thought it was kind of visually appealing um, it, and also easy to open and close is the twist on and off. What's nice too is if you're just going to be gone for like, let's say you're going to go for two days somewhere, you can just bring the top part. You don't need to have the whole giant thing with you everywhere. Um, and then a fourth option is a push and slide one like this. So you can see here I'm pushing and then sliding. I don't use this one personally because it's too hard for me to keep manipulating open and closed. The one that I use is a, is a really simple, you know, um, oh, this one you push and then it pops open. So instead of having to snap it open or close by really pulling here, you can push a quick little push here and then this one opens and closes, which that's also really handy. So again, th figuring out is it a good match between where is your area of pain or inflammation and how is the product designed to for you to manipulate it open and closed. And then step three, which I think is often overlooked, but it's super, super important. And for me as a patient, um, I can say, you know, realistically, step three is, what are you actually going to use? <laughs> because you can find the world's most perfect on paper solution, but if you don't use it, <laughs> then it's not helpful for you. So, um, for example, some even though this one kind of hurts me to open and close, some people might say, yeah, you know, I have a little bit of pain when I try to open and close this, but it's worth it because I really love it. It looks pretty. It's aesthetically pleasing. It doesn't make me feel like a sick person. I can put it in my purse. It's more discreet. It's not an obvious signal. Like I have this, you know, I'm a little bit of a no shame person, but um, I have this kind of ugly green to some degree container and I normally don't feel embarrassed or by it, but there have been times when I'm you know, eating a nice dinner and I'm like, do do do, just taking this out and it's a little bit awkward. So having something really nice and sleek, that could be your, your deciding factor. So I really encourage you to consider, you know, what's gonna really work for you on a daily basis um, in terms of aesthetics and motivation because a tool is only um, as useful as your, um, actual use of it if that makes sense you can have the best tool in the world and if it's sitting in your closet and you never use it then it's not actually useful it's really an individualized choice i'm not going to just say like this is the all-around best medication container for everyone there isn't such a thing because it's a um the decision has to do with exactly your body and your individual needs and how does that interact with the um, materials that you're using. So that is why um, I have this medical disclaimer on all the videos to say that, you know, if you want true, you know, occupational therapy and um, expert opinions and guidance on what's gonna work for your particular body the best, you should definitely get, um, or talk to your doctor about getting a referral to an occupational therapist. But um, what I'm hoping to do with these videos is provide some general education and guidance. So in conclusion, 
figure out what are your size needs that narrows it down first second step is how does it open and close and does that work for your arthritis or, or not and then step three is what are you realistically going to use so um i would love to hear from any of the listeners you know what are the medication containers or pill boxes that you've had the best success with or any questions you have let me know in the comments thanks so much box open and close and is this is the closure open and is okay. <laughs> the second step is narrowing down how 